Dr. Kornblu from the National Security Archive. He's also the co-author of a new book, Back Channel to Cuba, The Hidden History of Negotiations Between Washington and Havana. Peter, thanks for being on the program. It's a pleasure. So how significant is President Obama's decision to take Cuba off the terror list? This is something the Cubans really, really wanted, isn't it? Well, not only did they want it, but they deserve it. They haven't really uh, been uh, worthy of being on the terrorism list for frankly, 33 years. Ronald Reagan put them on the terrorism list because he wanted to obfuscate the difference between support for revolution in Central America and support for international terrorism. Cuba really has not engaged in international terrorism. Um, but it has been kept on the list for political reasons all these years. Now, as a prerequisite, as the penultimate step towards normalizing diplomatic ties between the two countries, reestablishing embassies that were closed uh, you know, 54 years ago, in 1961, um, uh, we have to take them off the list. Uh, and now we're going to, and the next step will be the normalization of diplomatic ties. How will Congress play into all this, and do they have a power to stop this from happening? Congress gets a report today from the president uh, saying he is uh, taking Cuba off the list. 45 days kind of grace period goes by during which Congress can debate the issue. They have no veto power over Cuba being removed from the list. Uh, but they can, of course, pass a resolution objecting to it. They can pass a law reestablishing similar financial sanctions on Cuba, which have really wreaked havoc which, with the Cuban economy in many ways. Um, uh, and then President uh, Obama will be in the position to veto that bill uh, if um, he objects to it. What about hardline Cuban Americans? We heard in Nitsa's piece in her report that many are still opposed to the warming of relations. Many of the older generation don't want this to be happening. And in fact, she mentioned a congresswoman from Florida, and I'm going to uh, read another quote from, from her. She says, President, uh, Mr. Obama's administration was so desperate to open up an embassy in Havana at any cost that it is willing to concede to Castro's demand. Adding any action would further embolden the regime and undermine U.S. national security. It's Your thoughts on this? The contrary. We are advancing not only our national security interests in Latin America, in Cuba, but we're advancing our national interests. Uh, we can help Cuba move its economy from a socialist orientation to a more capitalist orientation. We can have better relations with the entire Latin American community. I've just come back from the summit in Panama. All of Latin America wants to see uh, normal relations with Cuba. The Congresswoman Ileana Ross Latinen, who you quoted, uh, Robert Menendez, Marco Rubio, they're really part of only a handful mm -hmm. of uh, hardline uh, uh, Republicans who, uh, and Democrats who don't want to see this happen. But in fact, the majority of the American public want to see normal relations with Cuba. The majority, vast majority of Cubans on the island in Cuba want to see normal relations with Cuba. And Cuban Americans overall, I think, are going to be supportive of this move. And finally, Peter, you mentioned you just came back from Panama, of course the historic meeting between President Obama and Raul Castro. A lot of smiles, handshakes, nice comments. Did you ever imagine a day like this would come where the leaders of these two countries would sit down face to face and have a conversation after this almost is, half a century? This is the first meeting between a U.S. president and a Cuban president since the Cuban Revolution in 1959. So your thoughts? So it's an amazing uh, event. Um, I think it portends a much more uh, you know, normal engagement uh, with Cuba and the United States, and a policy of the United States that makes far more sense than the punitive policy of the past. We're going to advance our interests. We're going to advance the interests of Cuba and the Cuban people by adopting civil discourse and, and, uh, and, and peaceful engagement with the Cubans. All right.